Welcome to this edition of First in the West. I'm Sergeant First Class Mike Nash. During this segment, we'll show you some key moments of the Phantom Warrior Week prayer breakfast at Fort Hood involving a very inspirational Vietnam veteran. We'll also highlight some Division West soldiers who competed on Memorial Day in Austin's Capital of Texas Triathlon. That and more coming your way now at First in the West. The recent prayer breakfast, hosted by Three Corps at Fort Hood, was one of a number of events that recognized Vietnam veterans during a week-long Welcome Home tribute. The prayer breakfast, attended by veterans, soldiers, and family members, was well received. We proudly went to serve your nation. You stood tall, prepared to give your life. While so many of your brothers made the sacrifice, for you've been forgotten heroes for too long. It's great. I, you know, I, I, I talked to other veterans and they said the same thing. Guest speaker Dave Reaver, a veteran and former U.S. Navy riverboat gunner in Vietnam, shared the story of his brush with death eight months into his tour of duty. When I drew back to throw, he squeezed off around shooting at my head, but he missed. And he hit my hand. And every one of you in the military know white phosphorus only needs oxygen to spontaneously combust. And in one second, almost half my skin came off. I looked down and my face was on my boots. I could see my heart beating. My back was on fire, skin dripping off my arms. I was blind in my right eye, deafened in my right ear. I'm glad to tell you I have my vision back. I have my hearing back. I can see through my eye hear through my ear and I can see through my ear. <laughs> I can, I can take it off and look through it. See, there you <laughs> I should have taken bets on that one. The impact of his words resonated with many. We have vowed, Vietnam veterans, they will never do to our warriors again what was done to you. And we will provide opportunity and honor to every warrior coming home. I can't thank you enough for uh, your love of soldiers and your love of Army families and your continued support to the soldiers that uh, come home with uh, wounds of the body and wounds of the mind. And, and uh, Dave, you're, you're always welcome here at the Great Place. Deputy Division Chaplain for Division West, Chaplain Lane Stockland, is positive about the guest speaker and the fact that he addressed Vietnam vets at this time. Tremendous. A message of inspiration, hope, uh, and faith. It was a really phenomenal message. So we are really, we were really blessed to have them. Of course, the purpose was to show honor to these soldiers and their comrades, many of whom gave their all or returned as wounded warriors. The annual Capital of Texas Triathlon is a popular event, and in fact, this year over 3,500 competitors took part. Three of them were Division West soldiers. Sergeant First Class Gary Stacy was there to see it on Memorial Day. Here's his report. The 22nd Annual Texas Triathlon had over 3,500 participants taking part in various categories. Three Division West soldiers were also involved, having prepared for months for the Memorial Day event. First in the West had the opportunity to witness some of their training prior to the triathlon in Austin. You can come up with a variety of exercises, a variety of routines that you may not be able to simulate as well on the road. I'll do the 600 meter swim, the 13 mile bike ride, Sergeant Sellers to do the uh, 5K run. We did three rounds of 500 meter row, uh, 20 double unders, 15 burpees, 10 kettlebell swings, and five cleans. Eventually the time for training is over and the big day arrives. This event that's also referred to as the CapTex Tri typically attracts all levels of athletes from professionals to first time competitors. Division West Captain Eric Dunkley who competed in the military, collegiate and first responders category pushed hard through 1500 meters of water, 40 kilometers of cycling and the final 10K run. I had to finish strong on that one. I knew I had reserve left in me. I had too much reserve. Uh, like I said, uh, 
Uh, I really should have stepped it out a little bit more on the run itself, but I really put the hammer down on the end right there. Sergeant Major Corey Gill entered the relay portion of the triathlon. We spoke with him following the swim and bike events. Bike was fast, made a lot of time up there, but probably my best bike ride, probably my worst swim. So we'll see how it goes. We're probably five or six out of 32. Probably came in about 12. Uh, Sellers, uh, she'll make up about six positions on the run, but swim killed us. And his teammate, Staff Sergeant Janelle Sellers, who did have a good run, weighed in after it was over. So we completed it, and I feel good about that. <laughs> when it was all said and done, Captain Dunkley placed eighth for military males. Out of 19 co-ed teams, Sergeant Major Gill and Staff Sergeant Sellers came in fifth. It was a great day for Division West soldiers, though Staff Sergeant Sellers offers a refreshing perspective. The inspiring ones are, are the ones that are blind doing this. You know, they're doing a swim, bike run, they're blind. The APTs, those are the real heroes. They just, I admire the heck out of them. It brings tears to my eyes. I'm Sergeant First Class Gary Stacy, reporting from Austin for First in the West. During his time in Austin covering the triathlon, Sergeant Stacy was also able to visit a special memorial nearby. This memorial specifically honors the Americans who gave their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. We put up flags for every fallen soldier in Iraq and Afghanistan. As a number, there's almost 6,500 flags. I think that this really gives a face to the people that have given their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, seeing, I don't think people realize they think, oh, the, the conflict is over, but these flags represent every individual that has given their life to the conflict, and we, we do need to appreciate that. That's what our motivation is, honoring and celebrating our fallen heroes. It is a fitting reminder of why we need to remember. And that's it for this edition of First in the West. Join us again next time.